In this clip, we'll be learning about the Regio node. Okay, so I want to take a second to talk to you about the Regio node and how you can use it at different levels of complexity in your pipeline. So, so far we've basically seen how we can use 3D in a lot of the same way you use 3D in After Effects as far as just, you know, the basic After Effects package goes where you've got cards, these 2.5D uh, images. However, Nuke is going to take it a step further in its functionality where we can begin to bring in 3D from the outside. And so far, you can only do that in After Effects with a plugin. So we can go ahead and bring in the read geo node. So I'll come in here, kind of over where my robot is, and I'm just going to disable the card that the robot is on for a moment. And I'll hit the tab key and type in read, and that's going to bring up my regular read like we were used to and the read geo. So I'm going to plug that read geo into the scene. And as you can see, nothing happens. Um, and that's because with a read geo, you actually have to, you we're using it the same way as kind of a regular read node where the path is read in through the node itself. We're not actually plugging some image in at this point. Uh, we will in a little bit. So we'll go ahead and come down here to where that little browse button is. And we're going to bring in the robot underscore 3D OBJ. So go ahead and bring that in. And again, nothing happens. And part of that is because the scale is very different. We don't know exactly where this is in front of our camera. So let's hit the tab key and there it is. So we've got this giant robot kind of in comparison to the rest of our scene. He's very, very large indeed. So, um, you know, you could go in with the uniform scale and take it all the way down, but I have a feeling that that is still going to be a little bit large for what we're trying to do. You can see in relationship to the dog, um, he's still too big. So let's go into our actual scale here and put 0.25 on all of these options. So it's coming in at about a quarter of the scale and now we can kind of start to get him in place in relation to that little dog and play around with that uniform scale option that's going to help a lot okay so his feet placement looks about right let's see what he looks like when we actually jump back into our 2d so I'll hit the tab key and not bad. Maybe just make him a little bit bigger and um, we can maybe translate him down a bit. So again, I'm just using tab to kind of jump back and forth between the 2D and the 3D. And we can still use this uh, handle in 2D as well. Now he's a little more rotated in this picture here. You can see his arm is kind of over here and, and in this black one, it's in front of him. So we may want to rotate him a little bit. So anytime you want to rotate something in 3D, you'll just hold down the control key and then it'll bring up the rotate options and you can rotate on any of those axes. So let's go ahead and hit tab and now we're starting to get that. And again, we can still do this um, in our 2D. We can bring it up in our 2D tab, but it's not actually letting me rotate it. So we'll have to come back in here to 3D to do the rotation. There we go. Now, this is all very well and good as a placeholder, um, but I can't really see what he looks like. So I also want to show you a node we can use to add some materials to him. So you do have to have your original materials for the OBJ um, or for that geometry. Um, but if you do, you can do some really cool things. So I'm just going to come over here to those 3D nodes and go into the shaders. And there's a few different shaders here that we can use, but we're just going to use kind of this apply material that's really easy. And it's going to go after the read geo node in your um, flow order. And then you'll just plug your material in right there. So let's hit the tab key again, and we're going to bring in another read node. And that's going to be our robot diffuse. So go ahead and open that up and then we'll just plug that into the material 
and you can kind of get a look at our robot. So it doesn't look as good as the one that we actually rendered out. Now part of that is because we can spend a long time, you know, actually adding uh, the textures properly to this robot. Now I'm going to play around with the scale a little bit so we can look over the top of the robot himself. So um, if we come in here, we want this one. And I just want to jump back over here. And with our read geo node selected, just going to disable my apply material for a second. And now we've got access to our scale again. And actually, if I let that go back, it's actually going to bump me over here. I had this grayed out for a moment. So let's go ahead and scale him down a little bit. And part of the reason that I'm wanting to do this is so that you can see kind of the top of what he looks like. So it's a little bit jagged, as you can see. And part of that is that our scanline render just doesn't have, um, you know, with the, the what way we have it turned on now, it isn't doing a great job of this. Now you could go in and change the samples and play around with that a little bit. But there's actually a new node in Nuke that's still currently, as I'm teaching this lesson in beta, but it probably will be out um, sometime in the near future. And uh, I want to show you that it's the ray render node in Nuke. And so it's a way that we can come in and kind of start to smooth some of this out to have a little bit better um, experience with the 3D inside of Nuke. So um, let's go ahead and jump into our next lesson where we'll get into that ray render node.